being good with money has everything to do with your money history. I go back in order to go forward. So I go way back to your money history. So the questions I ask my clients is, what was happening at home when you were little? What were the conversations you heard? What did it feel like? Um, what happened with, um, for example, did you get pocket money? Um, what was your first experience with money? Um, when you got your first job, what did you do with your first pay packet? Was it stressful at home? Were there arguments around money? Um, I, I, I get my clients to do a, a whole questionnaire on what did it feel like? Was it stressful or was it happy? Was it flexy? Was it all okay? Um, was there was there abundance or did you hear, well, like what were the things that your parents said? Did you hear this? What do you think I am, made of money? What do money you think, grow money grow on trees? Grow on trees? <laughs> yes. Or did you, or was it all positive? Oh, yes, darling, there's plenty of that. That's okay. So this is setting you up for when you become an adult and 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 what you're hearing subconsciously in your mind. So that's why I say we have to go back in order to go forward. So what you what you're talking about is the empower methodology, yeah, uh, which comes off the back of the book. It is yeah. now a digital program, um, and it's the financial confidence program. Welcome to the Get Invested podcast, where we share great conversations with experts from all walks of life to uncover their secret know-how and where they invest their time, their skills, and their money, and the benefits that this has created. You see, the truth is that everyone invests. Every minute of every day, we're investing our time, our skills, our energy, and our money in something. Some of us are investing consciously, some unconsciously, sometimes for good, sometimes for bad, and sometimes for no impact. Get Invested will help you to start living by design, not by default. I'm going to help you to make it happen, not let it happen. You will hear the top tips on how you can live with conscious intent so that you can live more, work less, and leave a living legacy by investing now. Listen to the show to discover the top tips on how to get started, make the most of your investment journey, and ultimately to be living your dream, not someone else's. More episodes can be found on iTunes or at bushymartin.com.au forward slash get invested. Thanks for listening, and now let's get invested. Hi, friend invitors. What's your relationship with money? And what's your level of confidence with money? Is it a friend or a foe? Is money like an occasional acquaintance Facebook friend where you click like occasionally? Or perhaps you perceive it as something fearful? Or worse still, are you indifferent to it and its influence? On the other end of the spectrum, do you embrace money like another member of your family where you nurture it and grow it so that it enables and protects your family's future? Is money and your finances something that concerns and confuses you or something that you're confident and comfortable with? Unfortunately for many of us, money is more of an unknown and distrusted enemy and something that creates a lot of stress. Now, this may be because of your upbringing or your cultural and expected norms, or maybe you just don't like maths and numbers when you're at school. And because you associate money with maths, you've always felt alienated and fearful of it. And why do I ask you this? Because your relationship with money has a major impact on your present and your future freedom and happiness. In our Western capitalist world, it's both the oil and the fuel that powers and enables your choices. And nowhere is all of this more evident than with women. Are you or do you know a woman who's struggling to make ends meet and is concerned about her financial future? Unfortunately, the gender gap and maternity leave, alongside increasing rates of divorce and separation, mean that one in three women stop work with no retirement savings at all, and those that do manage to save often end up with less than half retirement funds of wee mere males. Now, I don't know about you, but these are shocking stats in this day and age. So what can you do about it? How can you improve and increase your financial confidence and relationship with money so that you can grow and nurture it to fuel your future? Well, this is where today's special guest, Tracy Sopra, comes in. Tracy is Australia's leading financial uh, advisor, specialising in women's financial confidence. With over 30 years' experience as a business leader, wealth mentor, award-winning financial advisor, author of Finding Financial Freedom, and a keynote speaker. 
Tracy has shared her proven method for shifting mindsets and the limits to financial success for thousands of women and men across Australia. And Tracy's dedicated to investing in women's empowerment. As the founder and CEO of Wow Women, Tracy leads a community of like-minded business, professional and entrepreneurial women working collectively to create change in their own financial life and the lives of other women around the globe. And Tracy's mission and message is just as pertinent to and relevant to men as it is to women in a world where we're all rediscovering our roles and responsibilities. So I'm really looking forward to diving into the subject. So welcome and let's get invested, Tracy. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Look, I'm really looking forward to our chat today. I know we uh, share a, a similar mission around uh, helping people with their financial future, but for those who uh, don't know you, uh, can you sort of start off by talking to, to us about what you do differently and most importantly, Tracy, why you do what you do? What do I do differently? Well, you know, I'm a financial advisor, financial planner for, for as you announced that I am. What I do differently, I, I sort of sat with this question and, and quite deeply thought about it. Um, for me, it's all about sitting with the client and really digging deep into who they are. I am a bit of an empath. Uh, not a bit of an empath. I am an empath, really. Um, and I really want to understand the client and who they are at their core. So for me, doing it differently means really understanding the client and um, getting to the core of who they are for me to be able to help them. Because how do you actually help someone in their financial life if you don't know who they are, where they come from, where they want to go? That, you know, it sounds simple, but it's actually not. It's quite, um, I've had tears. I, I've, I've had, you know, it's, how can I say, it's the most um, intense meetings you'll ever have. And for people to open up to you at that level, there's got to be a lot of trust um, and there's got to be a lot of vulnerability. And from my side where I sit, there's got to be a lot of emotional intelligence, a lot of gentleness. Um, I feel I have those skills. I've been doing it for quite a while. And um, I, I feel that um, my personality and the person that I am, I'm quite humble, um, allows me to do that, allows me to just sit in that space um, and let them be and just listen and sympathise and allow them to speak to me um, when they're ready and and you might say but Trace well, where's the numbers well the numbers aren't that important at that stage they come later we're talking about the human the individual we're talking about the person um, the people are what's important here so you know financial planning is not about the numbers to be quite honest um, it's about the relationship so what do I do differently about the relationship it's about understanding the human and what what do they want and how am I going to help them get there the other stuff is are the tools that I use I mean that that's my toolbox that's my skill set but um yeah I'm hoping I've answered that for you yeah that, you that, definitely yeah. have and I, I think I think the key there and you and I are on the same page with this uh often the the questions that you and I ask of people about themselves are quite confronting to them because they've never actually asked themselves the same question. So the reason you get the tears and you get the outpourings of emotion is that they're finally taking the time for someone who's genuinely interested in listening to who they are, what's important to them, and that, and that is the, the starting point and the finishing point. The rest, as you say, is just a, is a mechanism or a vehicle that helps them get to where they want to get to. So uh, the other part I'm keen to dig into a little bit more deeply is is the why why do you do what you do trace why do i do it um i just love serving and helping people uh, i uh i know i can help them i connect really well i love connecting with people i love connecting at that level for some strange reason i'm good at it and i know i can help them um, and I love it when a plan comes together. And because I've been doing it for so long, it's funny, I ended up here by default. 
Um, <laughs> I, I, it wasn't planned. I ended up here by default. Really? Um, I, I, I find that yeah. hard to believe, to be honest. But uh, I, I, why I do you did. say that? Well, my first love was dance. I was going to be a dancer. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I ended up in accounting and then financial planning by default. Um, they they that, seem poles apart, dancing yeah. to uh, accounting and finance. What, how, how did that come about? I'd be, I'd be interested to hear. Well, um, yeah, so uh, early, I've danced all my life and um, it, it's it's a form of self-expression, as, as you know, and um, it's just a natural talent that I've always had and I, and I still have it. Um, and um, and I and I still love it as a form of self-expression. So anytime I hear music, I, I I picture it in my head. I have a visual. I, I see pictures, and, and I still have that side of of me. Um, and uh, as a young young woman, um, I kind of uh, you know uh, floated around for a little bit. And I come from a family where my father was uh, big on education. Um, and uh, and so growing up, all I ever heard was, uh, "You will go to uni. You will get an education. You will be uh, an independent woman." He was very big. I was youngest of five girls. Um, my dad was a prolific um, feminist. You know, strong women he raised. And so um, I sort of digressed for a few years and went off. Didn't go off the rails, but you know, um, had a bit of fun. And when I came back to the education piece, I looked around, and thought. Right, there wasn't a lot of options around, you know, um, and accounting was there right in front of me, and I kind of went, well, I better grab this, yeah, um, and I grabbed the opportunity, and I guess I was good at it. Like I, I, I was a math science student at high school, funnily enough, nice. um, and uh, and yeah, I guess I, I was, I was good at that sort of thing. So, uh, I. Yeah, and, and so accounting led to, while I was doing my accounting degree, I remember looking at financial planning. It was relatively new back in those days. And um, and I thought, geez, that sounds really interesting. Always was interested in that sort of thing. But um, just finishing my accounting degree, I thought I better do my postgrad, which, uh, which was the uh, CPA, uh, becoming a certified practicing accountant. So did my postgrad and then went into financial planning. So that's kind of the pathway I followed. Yeah, loving it. I, I, well, you're a bit like me. I, I uh, similar backgrounds. Uh, born, born and bred in the country, and and uh, I was never a, much of a dancer, but I was was very creative with a pen, and I loved to draw and do art. And and I always remember my old man used to say, "Well, that, that's awesome, son, but at some stage you got to go and get a real job." Uh, <laughs> yeah. So and and dance, I could see dance sort of fitting into that category, and, <laughs> yeah. and, and it's that in the back of your brain, you're going, well, accounting uh, is a is a tried and trusted profession, which which is respected and and adds some value. Was, was it was that part of your subliminal thinking? Do you think or not? Exactly. Well, it was because I knew that that was my ticket to freedom. And I knew that once I got that degree clearly in my mind I knew that I would never be dependent on anyone ever again in my life I'd be totally independent always have work and always be able to financially support myself as a woman and that was how I was raised so that was that was the bottom line that ha- yeah. that was a not negotiable in my life and so, therefore that I had to I had no choice that was what I had to do <laughs> yeah well I'm, I'm hearing if you're a math science student like I was I did math one math two physics chem and English in uh, same in, same. in final <laughs> yeah yeah same sort of drill yeah uh, it, 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 I'm reading then that that numbers and maths is is something you've very always been very comfortable with is it yeah would I be reading that rightly yeah I love numbers I do yeah. love numbers because numbers don't lie I love it yeah I, like I, I, I don't know about you, because I, 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 as I sort of mentioned in the intro, I, I've seen that a, a lot of our mindset around money is is often built around not, not only what we see in the family, but in those early days at school, uh, there seemed to be two polar opposites. You either love maths or you hated it. Uh, you either embrace the numbers or they scared the hell out of you. And unfortunately, that that, that focus around mass and whether you're good at that or not tends to flow on to our uh, relationship with money. Uh, well, I, I'd certainly been that way in, in my own experience in, in the people I've seen uh, over the years. Has, has that been similar for you? Is it, uh, do, you do you see a similar exercise and a, almost a connection between the mass numbers and the, and the money relationship that then uh, forms the foundation of what people then do from there? 
Yeah, look, people tend to think exactly, but it's nothing could be further from, from the truth, as you know. People think I'm not good with numbers, particularly women. Um, the excuses I hear, oh, I'm not good with numbers. Um, oh, yeah, look, John's got that under control. Or, um, oh, look, I just don't have the time, all of these sort of excuses. But coming back to your question, being good with numbers has nothing to do with money. <laughs> Um, we do have calculators now. We're in the age of digital stuff and we have apps now. <laughs> um, being good with money has everything to do with your money history. So if I could connect this question with the first one, how do I do things differently? I go back in order to go forward. So I go way back to your money history. So the questions I ask my clients is, what was happening at home when you were little what were the conversations you heard? What did it feel like? Um, what happened with, um, for example, did you get pocket money? Um, what was your first experience with money? Um, when you got your first job, what did you do with your first pay packet? Was it stressful at home? Were there arguments around money? Um, I, I, I get my clients to do a, a whole questionnaire on what did it feel like? Was it stressful or was it happy? Was it flexy? Was it all okay? Um, was there was there abundance or did you hear, well, like what were the things that your parents said? Did you hear this? What do you think I am, made of money? What do money you think, grow money on growing on trees? <laughs> yes. Or did you, or was it all positive? Oh, yes, darling, there's plenty of that. That's okay. So this is setting you up for when you become an adult and, and, and what you're hearing subconsciously in your mind. So that's why I say we have to go back in order to go forward. And without doing that groundwork, you can't unveil what is actually going on right now in your early adult life. So if I can draw on this to tell you about my story, my money story, and I call this your financial blueprint, my financial blueprint, when I was piecing this together to be able to unveil this for my clients I did the questionnaire myself and right. literally I know this sounds really bizarre and it is the subconscious mind so I started answering these questions myself as I pieced it together and it took me a long time to put this questionnaire together because I was researching and this and that and as I did it myself to try and make sure everything was in line I, I got to a point where I'd answered all the questions and then I went Oh my God, I'm my father. <laughs> I couldn't believe what I was doing was exactly what my father had done. I just couldn't believe that I couldn't see that in my everyday life. And there it was, plain, right in front of me. And I thought, oh my God. Um, so, my financial blueprint, where I come from with money, is we lived from paycheck to paycheck. Okay. I was not taught to save. Nobody said when I first got my job, come here, Trace, um, here's a bank account, you're going to save money in here. No one did that for me. I didn't save a cent. Um, whatever was required, we would go and get a loan and we would pay that loan off. Um, no one would come to the door and, you know, um, you know we, we paid everything on time. We were good citizens. But yep. it wasn't... Um, uh, you know, some people say, unless we had the cash, we didn't buy it. We were the opposite. We just got a, a loan and we paid it off. So yeah. there were no savings. There was credit cards for, you know, discretionary stuff. Um, and we lived from paycheck to paycheck. So in my early adult life, I adopted that and it was business as usual. And away I went. I lived from paycheck to paycheck at a beautiful credit card, you know, Happy days, right? What did I know? I didn't know any different. I'm not meant to know any different. Yeah. Money is a skill that's not taught. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. what happened to me a few years down the track, and they were the old days, uh, when you got your statement in the mail, way before the internet, showing my age, I got my credit card statement, having a look, and I had this out-of-body experience where I'm looking at the, the balance and I'd blown out my credit card and I'm looking at it thinking, hey, is this me? Is that my name? You know, those few seconds where you, you can't believe what you're looking at. My stomach dropped and I thought, oh, my God, 
what is going on right now and then in order to justify it's amazing what the human brain can do i'd worked it out i'd been hacked right someone's hacked me for sure i've been hacked so i had to get to the bank didn't i so i got in the car don't know how i got there <laughs> driving um because again at no internet <clears throat> You know, uh, <laughs> yeah, got, yeah. got uh, parked the car and all that. Got got in there, waiting in line. My knees are, uh, you know, shaking and all that sort of stuff. By the time I got to the teller, grabbing onto the to the end of the the um, the, the bench there, and I, you know, this ver- word vomit coming out. And she said, "Oh, she could see my distress." Hang on, Trace. She said, let, "Let me just have a look at what's going on." She turned to her screen and, sure enough, read out all the transactions and. With my tail between my legs, I walked out of the bank, totally embarrassed. It was really humiliating, to be quite honest. Uh, I hadn't been hacked, of course. Um, it was all me. Yep. And um, I was on the, on the footpath there around the corner, and I just couldn't believe that I'd done that, that it was all my doing. Yeah. And that was my turning point. I said, I'm never, ever going to put myself, oh, I'm getting goosebumps again, in my, myself in this position ever again. How am I going to get out of this? And how am I going to make sure I never do this again? And that was it. That, that was the turning point. Now, if I can do that, coming from where I come from, anyone can do that. Simple strategies. They're not hard. Yes, money is a skill not taught, but we can learn them. We can certainly implement them and learn them. And I wasn't 18 when that happened. I was in I was in my mid 20s, 26. Uh, I was 27. Um, yeah. So. It, yeah. So, so given that and the and the learnings you took away from that, Trace, uh, how has your money story and your relationship with money and investment changed since since that point? Can you share that with us? Oh, it's massive. It, it's it's so massive. It makes me laugh. I do want to share this though. That that what I call financial blueprint. That never goes away. Don't get me wrong. Uh, fairy godmother didn't come and go. Poof! You're 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 um you're all cured. That never goes away. It's yep. still there. I just manage it really well. It rears his ugly head and says, "Come on, come on! You can buy it. You can buy it. Go buy it, buy it, buy it." And I'm like, "No, no, 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 no!" Um, it's still there. I I just know better. And uh, you know they. Uh, you might say, well, Trace, you're in that profession. Of course you know better. You're in a privileged position. You've got the knowledge. Da, da, da. Yes, I am. But I share this knowledge with all my clients. I mean, I'm an educator. I'm a financial educator for those that want to listen. And really, you don't have to be at my level to implement these things in your everyday life. Here's the thing. And I want to say this so loud and clear. Here's the thing. It's really simple. And I believe my profession overcomplicates it for some ungodly reason. It is so simple to get it right. It's simple stuff. And I will share this, obviously. Um, But um, so different. How is it different? Well, um, I look at money as a tool. I am not, um, I am not so intricately. Um, connect it with it at a raw emotional level anymore. I know where I come from. I recognize those emotions when they come up. I yeah. know where they're coming from. I've unearthed my ugly past. I, I you know, I, I did them. I, I know where they come from. I have, I, here's the other really important piece of the puzzle. Um, and as you get older, here's a benefit of getting older. Here's one benefit of getting older. You know who the hell you are, right? Um, and it just cements even more so who you are my values you know what's important to me here's the thing I found out not I found out I I confirmed for myself one of my greatest values which hasn't changed is to be financially independent in my old age so that means for me that I do not want to be dependent on anyone, yep. not even my kids. You know, people yep. say, oh, you know, your kids will look after you. I'm like, yeah, no, nah, I don't want that. I, don't, yep. I want my kids to have their own lives. I didn't yep. have kids to look after me. Yep. Um, how was I going to achieve that? 
if I was doing that, if I was living from paycheck to paycheck with no savings and living on my credit card, um, that behaviour with those values, there's a mismatch, right? Yeah. Was, was that behaviour going to get me where I want to go? I'm thinking no. <laughs> I'm thinking no. So that's what I'm trying to say. It, it just doesn't work. There's no way it's going to work. So unearthing where I come from, understanding who I am, then says, hey, you know, um, pull your head out of the sand, love, um, get your shit together. Can I say that? Um, <laughs> and course, and yeah. adjust your behaviour. So, um, yeah, it's, yeah it, no, it is totally different. That, that, that connection to your values and, and actually coming to grips with what your values are. Again, I, I, unfortunately, a, a lot of uh, people uh, focus on what's out there rather than what's between the five inches between your ears and uh, connecting with your values and knowing what they are and then using that as an overlay and a template to go, well, is this in alignment with my values or is it not? And then then almost be becoming a compass so that you're making choices on a day-to-day -day basis in terms of, is that in line with my values? And is that in line with my vision for where my life needs to head? Suddenly you've got both a magnet and a compass that's going to help guide you. So you, what I'd love to slightly pivot on now, Trace, is uh, you know once you'd sort of made that uh, decision uh, back in the, the, the credit card days, uh, share with us what was your first investment and, and why did you invest in it and how did it go? My first investment was in um, two shares and um, uh, I, I love them. I still have them. Um, I purchased uh, BHP when they were about $8.38. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You can still remember. I know. I do. I'm a numbers girl, right? Because I never of forget course. numbers. Very, uh, eight, it was $8. I'm not sure about the 38 but it was definitely $8. And, um, and NAB shares. And they were around 15 can't remember that fifteen dollars something. Yeah. Um. And how did it feel? Look, um, I'm a great believer in the tried and true concepts. Uh, when it comes to shares now, like for me, um, I'm a buy and hold girl. That's my strategy on shares. Yeah. Personally, so, yeah. uh, I like I I I don't reinvent the wheel. I believe you just stick to the tried and true top ASX 100, 200. Um, they're there. Um, they're not going to go away uh, when the market. Uh, this is no. This is not advice by any means. No. But this is my philosophy, my personal philosophy. This is what I do um, when the market goes down on those shares. Um, the sales on, get in there, and I just buy some and tuck it away, and and away you go. So whilst it was a little bit nerve wracking because I hadn't done it before, um, I knew that. Um, they were tried and true. They they'd been around forever. What was the chances? And and uh, and part of me said, well, geez, you know, you blew out the credit card. That was pretty bad. How bad could this be? Um, and away I went. And you know, I felt at the same time as there was that nervousness about it, I just felt not not in. I won't say the word empowered. I'd say I was quite pleased with myself. Yeah. <laughs> proud yep. it yeah, was a exactly. proud moment totally because yeah. you, you're actually doing your future self thinking for something that you're, yeah. you're currently doing to, to do that it's sort of slightly shifting then and you, you touched on this a little bit already but what does fulfillment and financial freedom look like to you then trust financial freedom for me is time freedom yeah see um, well, financial freedom obviously technically means that I don't actually have to get up and, and go and uh, physically work. I don't have to be somewhere and clock in my time, if that sort of makes sense. Yep. I can just do whatever I want and money is dropping into my bank account from the assets that I've built throughout my working life, be it property, shares, super, whatever. So, again, when I'm talking to clients, I always say to them, throughout your working life, your job is to siphon money out of your income, pop it into growth assets, let them grow, and then when you stop working, one day they'll put money back into your bank account and you yeah. won't have to get up and work again. Um, so having enough money to live, to support your lifestyle, whatever that looks like for you, because we're all different, 
Um, and I would argue that you need more money in the retirement phase. Dare I mention the word retirement? I think we need to think of another word there I, I, as well. I, I call it rewirement because it's not it's not like you're stopping. It's just like you're re-channeling where you're putting your time and your energy uh, and your efforts to things that are fulfilling to you at that uh, stage of your life. So, uh, yeah, I'm with you. I, I, I will never retire. I will definitely rewire. Because I I'll slightly that. change my emphasis into something that uh, I'll put more time into things that that I love doing, but uh, yeah, I love that. So, so I, I, as we sort of talked off air, I'm I'm very much a big believer in living by design. So that's getting very clear on you know what your ideal lifestyle looks like, and then using that as a magnet, taking the steps day by day and developing habits and rituals and disciplines that help us get there. Uh, can you share what your a uh, vivid picture of your ideal lifestyle and life vision looks like then, Trace? Okay, my ideal life. This is what it looks like. I love creating. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a bit of a futurist. I'm a visionary. I love creating. I love sharing and educating. And I, I, I feel that um, a lot of people that have been in their chosen profession for uh, many, many years, like myself, and I, and I will be for for more, more than 30 years, um, sort of go off into the sunset and don't share all of that gold, that knowledge in their head. What a yep. waste, right? Yeah, totally. Can you imagine? So I don't want to be one of those people. So whoever wants to know, um, happy to share it, all of it. Um, so I, I just, I, I, in, in whatever capacity, but mainly in the education piece. I, I love education. It's at my very core. I was raised with that belief. And I do believe that education is the key to solving most issues in life, yeah, yeah. Um, empowering people, helping people. Um, so I'm a big believer in education. So for me, it's about spending as much time creating, educating. I love traveling. Um, I love it, love traveling. So, um, and um, having a little bit more time to read my books. I love reading. Yeah. And I well, love, I love, love reading. And I can't read enough books. I feel like just, I wish I could just suck them into my brain because um, yeah. I, I usually have three or four on the go. Uh, Me too. And I, yeah. And, I, and they're usually personal growth books, um, yep. which, uh, yeah, at the moment I'm reading The Source, which I haven't finished. It's, it's amazing. I love it. Um, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So, so given given, and you, you sounds like you're you're pretty much already living your ideal life. Uh, what have you, and what will you continue to invest in to both attain and maintain that long term? Then, Trace. Uh, continuous personal growth. So, whatever that is, I spend a lot of time and money seeking people, programs, uh, books, resources to do that. That. That is something I will never ever stop doing because, uh, and and uh, sometimes people look at me strange and wonder, you spent how much? And to me, that is, um, it's not even, it, it, it's, it, I, I, it's a mindset thing. Uh, you know, some women go and spend five thousand on a handbag, and I think, <laughs> you know what? My first, here's, oh, this is a great example of how much I've changed. Not that I would have ever spent five grand on a handbag, and I never have, by the way. I think I, well, I hear I you're think, a closet shoe lover, though. Is that right? I am, but most women are, right? <laughs> but I've never spent that much on a pair of shoes. But you know what I think when someone says five grand on a handbag? I think, what parcel of shares could I have bought? <laughs> I'm serious. I mean, just think about that. Yeah. Amazing, right? Yeah. How much have I changed? Not that I bought five grand handbag but like yeah where I came from and what I'm thinking now yeah, how love, that love that so you you sort of mentioned you're a long long-term investor and, and shares are obviously uh, an important part of that but what part if any does property play in your investment strategy then trust love property so um in terms of our investment portfolios and I'm talking about myself and my hubby we're prolific in all areas yeah. and one of one of my um principles one of our principles is that whatever I, whatever advice I give, I would never give advice to a client uh, of something I wouldn't do myself. Yeah, that great. is integral. Yeah, I, I just, 
my conscience will not allow me to do that because why would you and how could you is probably the question I would pose. So yeah. if I am talking about self-managed super funds, I have one. If yeah. I'm talking about property, I invest in property. If yeah. I'm talking about bonds, I, I invest in bonds. Whatever I'm talking about, whatever I'm um, recommending, I am investing in. So right. we have self-managed super funds. Um, had a property in there, but then cashed that up. So predominantly in um, a, a managed fund and a, a massive share portfolio and self-managed super funds. But property... Um, only two in residential, mainly in commercial yep. um, in terms of property investment. Um, my hubby seems to prefer commercial. They come with their own challenges. Yeah. Um, Great cash flow. At the moment. Well, yeah. And then you've got um, you've got tenants that want to not, um, you know, sign leases again. And then, you know, because of COVID, they want to sort of change the terms of the leasing and of course. So that can be quite challenging. Yeah, and, yeah. and of course, commercial leases are uh, quite linked to the economy and so on. So whereas residential is not as complicated, but has, look, they both have different challenges. At the end yeah. of the day, the property by far, my opinion, is a massive growth asset. I mean, it just is at, since day dot. Um, so if you're looking for growth, like as we are because we're in our accumulation phase, which yeah. means that we're looking to build assets yeah. because we are still working. Yeah. Um, we are investing in property 100% um, yeah. because it just it delivers that for us. We can't do that by putting money in the bank. Totally. Um, it's the totally. vehicle that will give us that, and that's what we're looking for. Um, and we also do property uh, development in terms of service stations and um, okay. um, um uh, what do you call it? Um, shops and things like that. Yep. Yeah. So awesome. Definitely. So I, yeah, that, that, that's a really good spread. Then, so if I if you look uh, uh, back at uh, all of it, the uh, investments you've made in assets uh, up until this point, but what's been both your best and your worst investment so far, and and what have you learned from each of those? Best investment. The worst I can tell you. Uh, best investment. Um couple there definitely yeah. the shares i mean i, I again yeah. i don't think you can go wrong with tried and true shares yeah they're they're you know if you look at um one of my favorites is always commonwealth bank shares i just love them they're one of my favorites uh, i you know i've been tracking them since the gfc you know and numbers girl prior to the gfc they were about a 65 dollars share at the gfc they dropped down to about 34 then they regained post that's what that's what um, you know. Market theory tells you if yep. you don't live through that and you come out of uni, the textbooks tell you that. But until you go through it, then you go, "Oh, they were right. It's true. This is what happened." Yeah. Um, and then post GFC, obviously, it was uh, what was it about ninety five, and then it dropped. What did I buy it at? Hmm. Trying to think now. 50, I think. Now it's 105, something like that. Yeah. So you know if it drops, it's going to come back up. It, it's, a, it's a given. So love the share portfolio, direct shares, um, also the properties, without a doubt. Without a doubt, um, all the properties have been really, really good. Probably my personal worst one is um, in the middle of the GFC, um, I, uh, I got a margin loan on my um, – on. Uh, one of the platforms that I've got um, in direct shares uh, probably yep. wasn't the best thing to do because I was pregnant to my second child and I kind of wasn't at the office. And, um, uh, yeah, I got a margin call and uh, they sold me out of that. So I ended up with out the shares but still the loan. Good yep. lesson, though. Good lesson, yeah, totally. which, I share, which I share with clients. So, yeah. um, yeah, and, and yeah. the important thing there is leverage can be very good, but it can also be very bad if you are leveraged into assets that do drop in value and, and having buffers and, and reserves there to cover that uh, event is absolutely key because a lot of investors focus on the rewards, but they don't worry too much about the risk. So, uh, no, that's really interesting. So, look, I really appreciate you sharing that with us. So, what I'd like to do now is sort of switch into uh, the the common focus that you have uh, and I have on financial independence and, and financial confidence. Yeah. So I'd love for you to start off by just sharing you know, what mistakes uh, you see people making around money and investing. Trace? Oh, I, I feel like um, people 
predominantly think that um, they need a lump sum of money to invest. Um, they miss the whole point of it's a little bit over a long period of time. And that's what I mean by that's how simple it actually is. Yeah. It's every day, it's lunch money. It yep. can be 20 bucks a week. It can be 50 bucks a week. It, it, you've just got to start with something. This is what we're not told. Exactly. I didn't know this. Uh, we're still not told. Yeah. It's still not told. Yep. It's not common knowledge that your best friend is time. Why? Uh, because there's a thing called um, compound and compound requires time. Um, and so when we do the numbers on that, uh, and you'll know how powerful this is, um, somebody that throws double the amount of money with less time will not catch up to the person that started earlier. It's it impossible. So, you know, that's the biggest mistake that people make. They just think, um, oh, it's not going to make a difference. I mean, it's going to make a massive difference. Massive. Yeah, I, I, I refer to it as TLC. You've got to give yourself lots of TLC. And I don't, I don't mean tender, love and care. I mean time, leverage and compounding. And th those three together. Uh, love you know, it. I good love old that. Einstein, you, you and I, the, the old Einstein quote, he, he uh, quoted compounding uh, as the eighth wonder of the world. He did, and didn't he? If yep. you combine those three, yep. it, it's extremely powerful. And it's, it's the old story. Uh, you know, you can be putting those little bits of money away and you don't see much impact at all in the short to medium term. But as it starts to accumulate uh, over a 15 to 20 year journey, all of a sudden you've got this massive uh, asset base that, that's happened almost invisibly. But uh, the, the struggle there, of course, is that many people don't get started or, or uh, they start way too late. So, um, so yeah, no, that, that, that's, that's awesome. Uh, one subject that we'll, we'll jump into right there and then, because it's relevant to what we're talking about here. Uh, I don't know about you, but I see a lot of people say, oh, Bushy, you know, once I've paid off my home loan, then I'll start to invest. Uh, and I'm sure you probably get the same exercise. What, what, what's your thinking and what's your response when uh, you get that from the people you're trying to help? Yeah, I've heard that quite a number of times. Uh, the short answer is you can't do that. You can't afford to do that. Uh, you've got to get up close and personal. You've got to get really, really creative with your cash flow. You don't have the time. By the time you pay off the home loan, it's too late. You've just about exhausted. I don't know. How long is it going to take you to pay off the home loan? Like, provided you're really, really great with your cash flow, which most people aren't, by the way. I could count on my hand the amount of clients I've worked with over the last 30-odd years that are great with their cash flow. Yep. And that can actually knock it off in, say, 12, maybe 15 years, say 10, and yep. then invest. Imagine losing 10 years out of an investment cycle. That's nuts. Massive. So you got to get up close and really personal with your cash flow. When I mean cash flow, it's simply, as you know, money in, money out. If you don't know what's happening every week, fortnight, month, however you get paid, how are you ever going to get on top of everything? And it's really, um, it's not that, you know, bad having a look at it. You just got to sit down over a cup of coffee or a wine or whatever you're going to do with your partner and have a look at what's going on. And I promise you, nine times out of 10, you'll go, oh, my God, is that what we're spending? Because yeah. life's busy, Bushy, isn't it? I mean, we're all running around like headless chooks. Exactly. But the minute you take that time out and actually have a look at what's going on, you can actually tweak that. Now you're in control and you can make decisions. And it doesn't mean that, you know, you're going to get it right the first time or the second time or the third time, but at least you, you've made a start. Yeah, and you totally can tweak good. it as you go. Yeah, yeah, and I love that. But tell me uh, something else that I'm, I'm sure you, you see commonly as well. And in, in, in our sort of current age of instant everything and mm -hmm. very short term thinking, how, how can we motivate people to embrace the concept of delay gratification so that they're investing in themselves now for their own long term benefit? It's, it's a challenge I continuously have to get them to see uh, the, the merits in doing so. How, how do you um, get people thinking that way? I always say, think about your future self. I always say, can you visualize, because I'm a visual person, yeah, your too. future self is going to thank you because what you do today is going to impact that future self. So can you just shut your eyes for a minute and visualize yourself 
at the end of the road when you've stopped working and you're in the, the beautiful twilight years or wherever you are, whatever you picture yourself doing, have you got the life that you would like to have and that there's a currency that is called money that's going to allow you to live like that? I mean, that's the ugly truth, right? Yep. There's a currency with that because at the end of the day, nobody, it's not about the money. It's actually never about the money. It's yeah. about how do you want to live? Tell me. Oh, well, I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to, yeah, okay. Well, um, I hate to break the news to you, but um, there's a currency that goes with that. It's called money. Yeah. Okay. So can we just get our heads around that? Because the other thing, you know, that um, people always throw around, oh, money doesn't make you happy. No, but um, you kind of need it, don't you? It, it it fuels your happiness. That's that's the well. It's the not the money making you happy. It's 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 money allows you to live the life that you want to live. Gives you the choices. Um, helps you helps you um help your kids out. Helps you um be independent. Gives you your integrity. Um, all of that sort of stuff. So we're not talking about getting having hordes of money and patting your money. Like <laughs> we're not talking about that. We're talking about independence. We're talking about all of the um, the perks that money gives you. Yeah, so, I um, yeah. Now, I, I know you've, you encapsulated a lot of this in your awesome book, Finding Financial Freedom. Can you sort of share with us why you wrote it, what are the key messages, and, and who is it best suited for, Trace? I wrote it because I just wanted to create a very simple roadmap uh, without getting overly complicated. I am not a, a writer. Obviously, I'm a financial advisor, so I just wanted to break it down in a very simple um, roadmap type of uh, a book where anyone could pick it up and follow it um, because it's got a lot of, um, there's a resource centre and they could follow it step by step. And the people that have read it, our clients that I've gifted it to and uh, a lot of the people I come into contact with say, I found it really easy to read, Trace, and I could follow it through and it was fantastic. So, Um, I just wanted to create a a greater impact and allow people to be able to take, I guess, their future in their own hands because I'd seen a lot of um, books that give advice or were complicated but really didn't get people anywhere. Yeah. You know, does that yeah. make sense? Totally. There's a lot of stuff out there, but at the end of the day, people read stuff, but then none the wiser or, or, or they haven't been able to take one step further. Yeah. 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 Agreed. I, you, you, you've come up with a, a, an awesome uh, methodology, which you've encapsulated uh, you know, with the key principles of your empower approach. Can you sort of break that down for us uh, so that uh, the, the listeners can really glean the, the key things that you're communicating there? So what, you, what you're talking about is the Empower methodology, yeah. uh, which comes off the back of the book. It is yeah. now a digital program um, and it's the financial confidence program. So, um, and, and uh, forgive me for getting passionate about it, but the whole concept of this is starting with what we spoke about right at the start, drilling down into E for your experience and environment. Where do you come from? What is your environment? What did you experience? What is your mindset around money? So the E is for experience and environment. Um, The M is for mindset. So the E and the M has nothing to do with investments. We're we're not even talking about any of that at all. You would think that it wasn't even a financial Uh, type of a program with the E and the M at the start. When I first created this program, uh, it's morphed since 2015 and I delivered it um, in my office to a, you know, um, launched it to a group of 11 women. And when I first started it, um, I was thinking each night when I delivered it, I was getting an amazing response. They were all um, connecting with each other. There were tears. Oh, you're feeling like that too. It was just this awesome every night because I delivered it like six o'clock at night yep. for about an hour and a half. Yep. Um, it was a safe, beautiful space. Women, when they get together, oh, my God, yep. amazing things happen. Yep. I remember driving home at night thinking, oh, my God, 
what have I done? Like I, I didn't know what to expect. I went on pure gut instinct. Yep. And um, so it was when I first delivered it, it was an eight-week program. It had a different name. It was uh, the eight-week financial transformation back when I first launched it. It's now the Empower program. Yep. But obviously with anything, you improve it and, and, and it's morphed since. But what I'm trying to say is, Never once did they ask me because I kept thinking, are they going to say, Trace, where's the financial stuff? For goodness sakes, woman. None of them did. I was thinking, when are they going to ask me? Are they going to say, you know, we paid for this financial program. Where is it? Because at least for the first four weeks, there was none of that at all. We were drilling down into their mindset, where they came from, what they wanted, what their values were, yep. how we were going to get them there, what their future self was. We were d- doing the groundwork because I believe if you don't do that, all the skills in the world mean nothing. Why? Because you can't connect it back to all of the stuff that's within you So all the skills in the world aren't going to matter at all if you can't connect it back to yourself. Knowing the skills mean nothing. Yeah. So I knew that, and that's why I created a program that starts with you. Yeah. Does that make sense? Love that. So tell us about about the POW and the the E. (laughs) Okay. So the E and the M is about you. The POW, P-O-W, the P is plan investments, the O is for opportunities, and the O, the opportunity is all about debt and leverage, which I love. I get really excited about that, and I talk about property in there and the ability to leverage. Yeah. Um, the W is for um, wealth um, protection, so we talk about protecting what you've worked so hard for. That's missed often, quite totally. often. Totally. Um, because you work all your life, you build wealth, and then if you haven't insured it, and if you haven't done your estate planning, ends up in the wrong hands. Exactly. The E is for execution. Yeah. So you get yourself right, you learn the skills, and then you do nothing. Well, Take action. Yep. What was the point? Execution plan. Take all of that and execute it. And R is for review and refine, continuous improvement continuous improvement, stay within the group of people, like-minded people, and continue to do that. Don't just execute and never do it again. It is a lifelong, um, you know, journey that that you continue to do. So that's the Empower program, which is, I finally got it, I finally got it digitised, if you like. So it's on a platform, um, it's a program, and I'm super proud of it. Yeah, again, I'm a big framework person and, and a very visual uh, person in that regard. And it's, it's just so easy to encapsulate the, the all of the key components of how, uh, you know, we, we can improve our financial position by embracing that empower approach. Tell me, uh, I know you have uh, doing some fantastic uh, work with women and have done for a long time now. Tell us a bit more about the, the WOW Women uh, group that you've... Uh, been guiding now for quite some time where women is um is a is a collective of women that um uh really is a regional base it started off as a regional base simply because i wanted to have something in my hometown um being a businesswoman and and a family uh having a family i wasn't able to go to uh, metropolitan melbourne um you know midweek so i created something regionally it's now morphed more so online and now we're looking at going international so where women has three pillars now we have the education and training piece where we have the empower program it's fully online and we have other programs coming as well over and above that so that's one program and there'll be other programs such as how to establish your own business and so on and so forth so um, there's lots of other um, programs that I've got in my mind that I've just got to get out of my head and and um, uh, onto onto a digital uh, digital format Um, there is also uh, so on this particular platform um, there is also uh, I'm working with a, a number of companies that will help me also get some robo advice in there because I know women are time deprived. So I'm trying really hard to meet that side of the demand of of the market for women. Um, The other side is the collective, which is... um, which is the membership base where we also come together and and we're able to um, to connect on a different level and um, and I bring in other mentors from um, 
uh, health and well-being and, and um, uh, you know, across the board, um, all the different areas that women need support in. And then there's the industry base where I connect with, it's more B2B, where I connect with other businesses and, um, and really my uh, bigger purpose is to um, uh, really um, have other financial planners join me in um, empowering women worldwide to embrace awesome. their financial situation. Love it. Love it. I love that sort of circle of safety and that, that safe place to share and learn that you're creating where uh, people, uh, women can empower each other and inspire and motivate each other and, and learn along that journey in a, in a, a place where they're free to ask any question without feeling stupid. Because uh, there's very few, and, and in, in any area of investment, there's very few forums where men or women can actually uh, collect without being feeling like they're being sold to or, or what have you. So uh, I really commend you on the fantastic work you're you're doing in that regard. Uh, it's sort of bringing all that to a, uh, a sort of logical conclusion then, Trace. Um, uh, what do you believe are the keys to successful money management and investment and, and why? Key to successful money management. Well, <clears throat> the key is... Firstly, understanding and accepting that you can do it. Yeah. Everybody can do it. There's yeah. no such thing as I can't do it. That's, that just doesn't exist. Um, secondly, personal responsibility. We, have, we are responsible for ourselves. Make no mistake about that. I'm a personal responsibility junkie. I, I, I always look to myself first and foremost. Um, so we have to step up for ourselves. We are all responsible for ourselves. Once we accept those two things, it's all about um, the simple things. And the simple things are um, best advice I got for um, best financial advice I ever heard, and I live by it. It's called pay yourself first, which means this is the weirdest thing, and, and um, most people go, there's never enough left trace for me to save. Yes, there is. Oh, but there, yes, there is. I promise you there is. So what you got to do is take it out of your control, direct debit. You can't do it. Direct debit it out of your account, offshoot it to another account. I don't care whether you start with 20, 50. I don't really care. Just start. It's called pay yourself first. You. Yeah you because if you're waiting for your turn it will never ever come no one's ever going to say oh bushy you should have 100 bucks a week now that that's never going to come because every week there's going to be oh i've got to change the tires or the school fees oh, i've got to catch up with it oh there's always something right yep so forget that and trust me you will adjust your living to what's left yeah, it just exactly. somehow happens yeah. best advice i ever got live by it just do it it happens. And when I say that to clients, you know what, you know what, what ends up happening? Or, or you know how I talk them into it. So first we do the cash flow analysis because I hate the word budget. Like nobody likes the word budget, no, right? Because like, you know, who who likes that word? It's kind of regressive. It's, so I renamed it. I called it the cash flow analysis. So we do a cash flow analysis. We have a look. Um, and nine times out of ten, there's a there's an excess, right? So I say to clients, well, and say the excess is um six grand and or uh, I don't know say it's 10 grand yeah and I say to them let's say we got it wrong by five let's say you got five left do you reckon you could put a hundred bucks away in a week and they go oh yeah I reckon we could do that okay yeah. um do you reckon you could put it into that account and they look at each other and go oh yeah we, I think we could do that and I go well what's the worst thing that's going to happen? You might end up with a couple of grand in the other account. It's not like it's going anywhere. And if exactly. you need it, you could always pull it back, wouldn't you? And they go, yeah, well, all right. And you know what happens a couple of months later when I see them? Oh, best thing we ever did, Trace. We've got a few thousand dollars in there and we didn't even notice it. Yeah. Bingo. Love it. You know? Love so it. best advice. And so that's, that's what I'm talking about. Those simple little strategies. Now, once you've siphoned it, the key is then put that towards growth assets. So you've mm. got to get invested. Yeah. Like you, you don't save money, you make money. 
how do you make money? You got to invest it. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome, awesome. Love that. Look, uh, I'm going to transition now into what I uh, affectionately refer to as the the ambush, uh, bushfire lightning round. Where, uh, uh, like all podcasts, we ask you the, we get you to tap dance by asking the the fast four questions that uh, everyone wants to glean your words of wisdom on. Uh, so the first of those, and I know you're a quote girl. Uh, you've got some great quotes from some of the uh, research I've uh, looked at with some of the stuff you've done in the past. What, what's your favourite quote and why, Trace? I love this one, and I and I still love it. I can't get past it. I'm going to read it because I've got it on my screen here. People will forget what you said. People will forget what you did. But people will never forget how you made them feel. And it's by Maya Angelou. Hope I said, hope I pronounced your name right. Yeah, it's a a great quote because you're absolutely right. We get hung up on on the minutiae of stuff that doesn't really matter, but it's it's how we lead ourselves and others feel that's really important to any interaction. As you've said a couple of times today, it's, it's not about money, it's about the relationships. So uh, and I love that. Uh, on the literary field then, apart, pr- pr- apart from your own awesome book, uh, Finding Financial Freedom, what's the top book that you'd recommend we read and why? I can't get past The Slight Edge by Jeff Olson. My favourite. You read it? <laughs> oh, it's one of my favourite books. If we talk about quotes, uh, his quote in that book is a cracker for me because it's life is a curve construction. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, the uh, time is the builder and our choices are the architect because I, I used oh. to be an architect. So that really resonates with me. And uh, what, what an awesome book for those that haven't read it. I'd, I'd highly recommend you go out and grab yourself a copy because that, that those, the TLC concepts, the time, the leverage, the compounding, uh, all of those things, uh, uh, you know, he spells it out way better than I, I can communicate it in that book. And he talks about it being at the curve goes both ways. I know we, that's the scary part, yeah, isn't it? It is. So yes. well, I, I love that. I think it's a, a recipe for a sustainable success in anything we do is adopting the principles in that book. So that's a cracker. Now, you, you've already talked about uh, your best piece of investment advice. What's your worst piece of investment advice that you've ever received? Um, worst. Oh, probably. Well, yes, yeah, save money. I mean, you don't save money. You don't put money in the bank. You make money. Yeah. Love that. And when I first heard that, I felt like, hey, I like, I sort of went, huh? What do you mean? I didn't quite get it in my early days, but I get it now. And for those who are probably going like me, hey, what I'm trying to say is you don't put money in the bank because you can't, inflation will erode that. Whilst that feels good, and in the bank, it's stable. Um, comfort zone is never going to get you anywhere. You've got to make money, and making money means you've got to invest it within your comfort levels of risk profiling and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. But yeah, you don't save money; you make money. Totally agree. Well, on the on the theme of uh, Jeff Olson and the slight edge, uh, what's a personal happy habit, a rewarding ritual, or a daily discipline that's contributed most to your investment success to date, Trace? The power of positive thinking. Yeah. Every single time. Yeah. I I find that, and I I thought about this. I, I really did. I thought about this for quite some time, and I thought about rituals and what I do on a daily basis. And and I know that every single day, no matter what is happening in my life or what's happened the day before, or, or you know how bad things may feel, I am just by my very nature a positive person, and I'm always looking for the next. My positivity allows me to look at for the next thing and yeah. always looking for um, the next growth piece. Just don't l- lay stagnant in the same place. Look to extend yourself, stretch yeah. further, stretch further, stretch, keep stretching, keep stretching yourself. Yeah. Um, and the power yeah. of positive thinking will just um, help you help you get there. Totally agree. No, but very wise words. So reflecting on our great conversation today, Trace, what are, what are your key takeaways and immediate actions uh, that aspiring and current investors can take? Well, 
I think that um, they should pay themselves first. I think the first thing they should do is have a look at their cash flow. I mean, this is what I preach every single day. Um, it's not much fun. People think it's not much fun, but I, I would I would argue that it is a bit of fun. It yep. is a bit of fun because who doesn't want to know what's happening with their money, yeah? Yeah. Check out your cash flow. See what you can siphon into another bank account. Start the direct debit and see what happens in a month. Challenge yourself. Yep. What's the worst thing that could happen, right? You got some money in another account and see what happens because everything starts with cash flow. So you can't build wealth without managing your cash flow. Everything starts with that. And once you get that under control and then you do your first investment, that's pretty cool. Absolutely. Yeah, no, extremely well said. So for those in the audience who've really resonated with your message today, Trace, uh, how can they find out more and get involved uh, with what you're doing? Well, they can um, email me or they can get on my website, tracysoffra.com.au or wowwomen.com.au. Um, and I'm sure you've got my contact details um, with the podcast. Yeah. There is the uh, there is the, the uh, financial confidence quiz, which will be on, uh, there's a link, I believe. Which yes, is great. there will. And, yeah, um, I, just jumping on that, I, I, I'm going to encourage everyone listening to, uh, to, to, to get started on improving uh, their own financial confidence and their relationship with money and to find out exactly uh, where you're at the first step, that, and it's a great step to nurturing and growing your money mastery is to take Tracy's Financial Confidence Quiz, which you can find at financialconfidencescorecard.com. And there'll be a, a link in the show notes. So it's going to be very easy to click on that. And then uh, that's a, a great place to start getting to know who you are before you start deciding what you're going to do with your money. Sounds great. That'd be awesome. Awesome, Tracy. Look, uh, really appreciate you uh, being so generous with your time today and, and sharing uh, our joint mission on helping hardworking Aussies to really better themselves and get invested in their own future. So we're uh, looking forward to continuing the dialogue and, and doing more with you in the future. Thank you, Bushy. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you Thanks, for having Trace. me. To get a summary of all this investment gold in the show notes, just email me on hello at khgroup.com.au. That's H-E-L-L-O at khgroup.com or check us out at www.bushymartin.com.au forward slash get invested. I look forward to joining you next week for another episode of the Get Invested podcast. So thanks for listening. And as always, dream as if you live forever and live as if you'll die forever.